Seattle Seahawks, will they be winning like they were in the heyday of the Pete Carroll era? Mike McDonald, as we yesterday both came to the conclusion, even though the early smart money in NFL circles was on Dan Quinn, you can't come back from giving up 48 to the Packers in the playoffs. No matter how badly John Schneider wanted to bring Dan Quinn home, he was smart enough to know he couldn't do it. So you go out and find somebody who is literally half the age of Pete Carroll and Mike McDonald to come in, defensive background, Ravens defensive coordinator. You know, when I think about the Ravens defense, I think about what you would say before the start of any given season when we try to assess the Ravens. You look at their defense, it isn't very good. Oh, but you know what happens? It becomes pretty damn good. And that has something to do with the coaching of the defense. The coach is special. He's special. This is an awesome – I think this is an awesome fit, right? I really do. Uh, and one of my favorite fits, I think, of the whole hiring cycle. You know, one, right, I mean, Dan Quinn, like we've talked about, much respect, but that's just going to be, what, a, a lesser version of what Pete Carroll is? I think you need a new, a new message, new pizzazz. There's a culture there that's created, and I know they've already referenced that, and this is a guy that can kind of carry it over, but with a new spin, you know, a new angle to this whole thing that will be refreshing to the football team. Let alone, like, I, I mean, Mike, I don't know if you feel it. The Seahawks, the Ravens, are they not like the same team? It's just, you know, they're both birds. They're both like we want a bunch of ass kickers that are mean on defense, and that's the way we want to play. I felt like the Ravens and the Seahawks, it's like they're, they're brothers just in a different conference, basically. It's the same mantra, right? We're going to get big, bad dudes. We're going to play fast. We're going to play physical. We're going to do all of that. I mean, Mike McDonald, I really like it. One, he's a brilliant defense of mine. I think you heard me say during the year, as far as watching what they do schematically, it's my favorite defense to watch in all of football. They can do everything. So that is awesome. And, you know, there he goes up to Seattle. We know defense has been a problem, and he's going to be able to straighten that out and then still be about energy and toughness and all the great things that Pete Carroll has instilled into that organization – you got a guy here that can, you know, carry that torch. And like you said, he's younger. He'll be able to put his own thing thing on this, his own spin on it, while still embracing Pete Carroll and the things he brought to the football team. But uh, I, I really, this is one I think John Schneider knocked it out of the park. And I think he's got a chance here for this guy to start a Legion of the Boom Part 2 type of thing with this guy uh, manning down the defense and now the head coach of the football team. And as he said on the way in the door, we're going to be here a long time and win a lot of football games. He becomes the youngest head coach in the NFL at age 36. Gerard Mayo held the title. Gerard Mayo is like that free agent quarterback that signs a contract and he's the starter until they draft the next guy. <laughs> right. Gerard Mayo held it for 19 days as the youngest coach in the NFL. There it is. Mike McDonald, Gerard Mayo, Sean McVay. Look at McVay. McVay is still shocking. In the NFL like people forget, for seven right? years. Right, right. It's really pretty insane that Sean McVay is still 37 doing what he's doing. He feels like he's one of the more seasoned, older coaches in all of football. And he's still, you know, not even in the prime of his coaching career. So it really is remarkable where what he has done in such a short period of time of life in general. And think about the players they have on defense in Seattle. Yeah. Young guys like right. Devin Witherspoon. Right. Like Tariq, Tariq Woolen, Woolen, Tariq right. Woolen. Although last year, last year something, yeah, there something some issues went a little sideways. Right. Yes, but and 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 they're gonna have to do something about Jamal Adams. That yeah, that that's wasn't done. Ending we know well that may be over. You believe that's over and done? Even yeah. though they're gonna have some cap issues to deal with, the defense has never really been the problem. Although it hasn't been as potent in recent years as it was back in the Legion of Boom days. The offense is the thing that just always felt like something is being held back right. and I was on radio in Seattle last night and you know they were talking about well what's gonna happen with offensive coordinator so I don't know what's gonna happen but I know this they didn't hire Mike McDonald with him coming in and saying we'll worry about the offense later he's got a plan that was part of the pitch that he made that they liked and he's pretty damn confident of who he's gonna get to be his offensive coordinator and what the offense is gonna be how it's gonna look how it's going to operate. You don't get hired as an NFL head coach if you don't go in there with a detailed plan and with the confidence that you can deliver. 
I wonder how many times the guy goes in with his plan as to who he's going to get on his staff and he fails to deliver. Like, I don't know how firm these commitments are yeah. on the way through the door. Sometimes they actually hire members of your staff before they even hire you, and then you don't show up. And and the defensive coordinator, Matt Eberflus, is like, what the hell yeah, happened? Wait, I where's the head coach? And right. Daniels yeah. didn't come. Right. But so, so usually it's pretty buttoned up by the time the head coach gets the job as to who's going to come along. Yeah, it, it usually is, right? He, I would say – the majority of the time, once a guy like Mike McDonald starts to feel like, hey, I'm close to getting this job, he's already before that reached out to people you know, going, hey, I'm in the running here. I got a serious chance. So I want to let you know. And as he gets closer, yeah, I would say by the time he gets hired, he's probably got a pretty good idea about more than half of his staff as far as I know they're coming. Now I got to fill in a few other spots but also within those spots, is there anybody here in Seattle that maybe I go, wow, they've done a good job. I want to keep. And that's where he's going to have to fill in those little holes there as he continues to build, you know, the organization around him and what he likes. So offense, certainly. Where does it go? You know, I think, too, they've gotten away from their mantra a little bit. You're right. I mean, we went forever. You never had to worry about the defense. But the last few years, you've had to worry about it, right? I mean, we've had like – we had, we had years where we went through the first half of the year with Pete Carroll, defensive coach, out Legion of Boom, where we were like, hey, they're, they're on pace to set the record for the worst defense in the history of football here, and we're in week nine. Now, they write the ship to a degree and still become a pain in the butt, and we know that. But the last three years, we're talking about a defense that's been in the bottom 10 of football every year as far as yards allowed, and this is where this is a guy that's he's going to change that around. And in a lot of ways, has a lot of those Pete Carroll qualities where it's 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 energy, right? It's all about that detail. That's all you ever hear about when you hear about people that go up to Seattle is just the energy. Wow, Pete Carroll, the team meeting, he makes us compete. He he kind of rises the level of the, the, the building on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I don't think it's going to be like that, but and I don't know Mike McDonald, but the one thing I always hear about him is like polished, right? Right, extremely detailed, okay, all in on the X's and O's department, and then a guy that knows how to relate and talk to everybody, right, everybody in the locker room. And I think that's, that's a big thing, you know, whether it's the big D tackle or the star diva corner, Mike McDonald can relate to all of them and talk to all of them that way, and that's going to go a long way, especially for defensive coaches. That connection's important for get those guys to fly around for you, play hard for you, and do that. They got to like you, and that's where I think he's got the magic touch, and that's where I think he's going to be perfect for Seattle. Got started in the NFL as a coaching intern with the Ravens 2014. Right. Worked his way up the ladder to defensive assistant, defensive backs coach, linebackers coach, and then in 2021, Went to Michigan. he spent a year right. as a defensive coordinator with the other Harbaugh, Jim, and then after that year, back. He decided after a year, I've had enough of Jim. i got to go back to John. And that's probably <laughs> not what he decided. But the timeline fits. The circumstantial evidence is there. Hey, I'm with John. I'm with John. I'm with John. Hey, let me go try Jim. I'm going back to John. <laughs> He's <laughs> right. been the defensive coordinator for the last two seasons and now in Seattle. The only sad part of this is he's not in the AFC with the two Harbaugh's, so they won't cross paths on a regular basis, but they could end up facing each other in a Super Bowl at some point. Ravens Chargers, not Ravens Chargers, Ravens Seahawks or Chargers Seahawks. So, uh, neat story. Young guy, great, great rocket up the the. Uh, the hierarchy, and now yeah. he's in position to take over. Got some work to Seahawks do. Seahawks do, yeah. like all these other right. teams. 25% of the league, new coaches for 2024. We'll see what they all do. And the reality is some will be good, some won't be good. That's the way it works because all these teams play each other. They all intersperse, and we know how it goes. And to say we're going to be here a long time and win a lot of football games, you may win a lot of football games, but – you better win enough or you're not going to be there a long time. And he knows that walking through the door. He knows how football goes because uh, every year, every it's amazing. And they're already saying next year there's going to be six, seven, or eight vacancies. I don't know how they already know that. There's definitely going to be six, seven, or eight coaches we're looking at as potentially inevitable NFL head coaches in the next cycle. But we don't know how many vacancies there's going to be. But because of the fact that there's 272 games – and for every good team, there's a bad team. There will be enough bad teams that they're saying we got to make a change. Yeah. So 
we will be right back at it again. And it just turns over and it turns over and it turns over, which isn't conducive to lengthy stays, which makes what Belichick did in New England even more amazing, which makes what Andy Reid has been doing 25 straight years as an NFL head coach. It's incredible. And I he guess. got to a point where it was, it was time to move on for the Eagles. I, I, they probably regret it a little bit in hindsight, but there is a point where you just need to move on. Mike Tomlin. Look all the years he's been in Pittsburgh. Yep. It is not easy to stick around for five years, much less 10, 15, or 20 years. So maybe Mike McDonald will be there as long as Pete Carroll or longer. Again, half of his age. He could be there 36 years and be the same age Pete Carroll is now. I, yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, we'll see. I, I think this has got tremendous potential. That's the one thing I'll say. You know, you, you know like I said, it's, cr- it's tremendously creative. It's, it's outside-the-box thinking. It's game to game, different stuff, right? That I you you always hear me talk about, right? Hey, it, this is this is cover two this week, but this week it's cover two. But we're gonna tweak this, this, and this, and it's gonna look a little weird, but it's still cover two. But it it makes sense for this team. I mean, you know, just to give a, a light example, that's where he's special. You saw even in the second half of this last game. Again, yeah, they lost to the Chiefs. The defense played phenomenal. I mean, the Chiefs got what? I mean, they had. What was it? 60 yards until the last pass to Marquez Valdez Scantling in the second half, somewhere in that that capacity. Uh, so the adjustments are there for what he has to do. The game planning's there. The eye for talents there. The attitude, Harbaugh-ish physicality, detail. That's all there. I think then you couple that together where I also like this, right? I'm never a fan of retreads, right? Like we've got Pete Carroll. Now we're going to get, you know, we're going to get a the the B plus or B version of Pete Carroll and have him coach the football team. Nah, I don't love that. I don't always think that's the best way to go. Uh, and what the other thing I love about this, Mike, hey, think about the division he's in, right? What are you going to do? You got to deal with Shanahan and McVay. Twice, four times a year, right? Your options are either you get Ben Johnson and you get in a shootout with them every year and go, we're going to outscore them and they're going to try to outscore us and we'll see where it goes. Or you go, we're going to get an unbelievable defensive coach and be different that way. And we're going to give Shanahan and McVay problems to where they can't just march up and down the field on everybody or us all week. That's where... I think it's extremely exciting for the the Seahawks too. The, the 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 combative move about your division, and I think that's where it always starts. How do we win our division, and where do you go from there? And I think Seattle looks at it and goes, "Wow, we got to deal with those two coaches, right? Our move, we got to become great defensive football teams." And I understand that now they got to just start getting the pieces together and the groceries, like we talk about. And there's there's a grocery list. They need some new players there. To, to get this Mike McDonald era uh, going, and that'll be interesting to see what they do there too. And the one big caveat when you hire a defensive coordinator to be your head coach, the most important relationship between player and coach on the team is quarterback and whoever is responsible for coaching the quarterback. If you get an offensive coordinator and a quarterback who do well together, then you have to start worrying about that guy becoming a head coach somewhere else. But you have to have the confidence that you're grooming people under him to become the offensive coordinator and continue. Good problem to have. We lose an offensive coordinator every other year. I mean, John Harbaugh, great head coach. Hey, good problem to have. Mike McDonald graduates to a head coach somewhere else. We find someone to replace him, and we develop him, and off we go. But I like your point that when you're dealing with Shanahan and McVay, sometimes – The only way you're going to beat them is to try to control their offense. You're not going to outscore them. You're just going to try to make them score less. And we've seen the last two hires in the division, defensive guys, Jonathan Gannon and now Mike McDonald. Another member of John Harbaugh's staff leaving. The Titans reportedly will be hiring defensive backs coach Denard Wilson as defensive coordinator. He was the Eagles DB coach in 2021 and the defensive passing game coordinator in 22. Been with the Ravens for a year. Now becomes the Titans uh, defensive coordinator with Brian Callahan as the new head coach. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.